you have uh, Bryce Young as your third quarterback on the big board. Why is he third, Mel? You know, it's, it's really a, a three guys all bunched together. There, there's no really gap between the three. I put them all right there together. We're still early November. Got a long way to early April when I have to make the final call on who's QB 1, 2, and 3. But, you know, Bryce Young's you know, 5'11 and a half with 185. So we haven't had a quarterback small in stature go this high. But when you look at those three right now, it's, it's, it's too close to call. Will Levis, uh, C.J. Stroud, and, and Bryce Young all in the similar category grade-wise. And then you have Jalen Carter, defensive tackle, George and Will Anderson Jr., outside linebacker, Alabama, slightly ahead. Mel, why do I feel like Will Levis is a little more – and I know it's early, and we haven't broken down all the Mm -hmm. film and we haven't gotten into the offseason and all those sort of things, but why do I feel like he's a little more pushed up than he should be just watching him against Tennessee – I walked away from that game saying there's no way he's a top three quarterback. You can't worry about games in college, Key. I've found that over the – I've always brought up Dante Culpepper against Auburn, Josh Allen against Iowa, Ben Roethlisberger against Iowa, Peyton Manning losing three games to Florida, Troy Aikman not beating Rodney Pete. College games are great, but it's not about the NFL. And it's not about – it's going to have to define Will Levis. Will Levis against Mississippi State threw a pick six to Manuel Forrest, came back next drive, took him down to win the game, get it to score. In this game, they were just outclassed, outmanned. And that happened to Tennessee. They're a hot team. They got the best of them. Will Levis has been beat up all year. Uh, and, of course, he battled through a lot. But he's in an NFL system. He's got a big-time arm. He snaps it off, and he's mobile. So I think at the end of the day, Will Levis could very easily be the number one pick overall. Mel, if things continue to go south, for the Pittsburgh Steelers with Kenny Pickett, and they end up having one of those top picks where they could draft, you know, one of these top QBs, do you think they should consider doing it? No. Uh, Kenny Pickett's 24. He's played through adversity now. This team needs some help on the O-line. They got, obviously, holes to fill. And Kenny Pickett, if you draft it, what do you know now that you're not – or what are you going to know at the end of the year that's going to determine whether you go another direction? You're not going to know enough. They know internally what he's capable of. On the field, you're going to see the inconsistency. He's a rookie quarterback. I don't care if he's 24, 28, 21. He's still a rookie in the National Football League despite all those games he played at Pitt. So for me, yes, they drafted Kenny Pickett because they really like him. He's shown flashes. Uh, obviously, he's going to struggle, but right now, I think you move forward with Kenny Pickett and you pass on the quarterbacks and you try to fill one of those two or three key holes they have. On your big board right now, you have B. John Robinson out of, out of Texas, the running back, the first running back off the board in the top 10. Many people over the years, Mel, as you as astutely said, it doesn't really matter, will shy away from taking a running back so high. Why do you have him in the top 10? Well, you grade players based on ability, not on philosophy key. So I would never take a running back in the first round unless you had to have that guy late in the first and the head coach wants him and, and you got to have him. It's fine. Late in the first round, maybe, but probably not for me. I would fight it tooth and nail. But uh, you grade him on ability. And B. John Robinson's a great running back. He can do it all. And uh, to me, he's going to go probably in the top 10. Would I take him? My philosophy is don't draft a running back in round one. But I'm not going to grade him as the 40th player because of philosophy. On, on ability, guys, he's a top 10 player, no question about it. You so, have f- – go, go ahead, Max. Key. No, no, go no, ahead. I was going to say you have four wide receivers in the top 25. How close are these guys? Uh, you know, Jordan Addison, obviously, uh, high from uh, Tennessee. And then I can't mm-hmm. say the last name. The, the Jagba, the Jagboo from Ohio State. Then, obviously, uh, Johnston from TCU. How far of a separation are these guys? Not a lot, Key. Jordan Addison, we saw him at Pitt, what he did with Kenny Pickett. We see him now with Caleb Williams, obviously injured as well. But you think about Jackson Smith and Jigba, you mentioned him from Ohio State. He's been hurt all year. So I'm not be like, well, well, is that going to hurt him in the draft? He's been injured. You know, it's not going to kill him in the draft. He's still a first-round caliber player. He was right there with Olave and Garrett Wilson lighting it up. So uh, for me, Jackson Smith and Jigba's oh, you know, only not higher because of the injury. 
Quentin Johnson has come on. He's got the physicality to be a high pick, no question about that. So I think when you look at these receivers and you say, okay, how many will go in the first round? Jalen Hyatt right now is a guy I'd put there. People say, where did he come from? Watch Tennessee play with Hendon Hooker, and you see a guy who's got incredible speed, has dominated in every game. Nobody can cover this guy. Now, Brew McCoy helps out the USC transfer. They're getting One Cedric minute. Tillman back last week. He's had a real good start till he was injured. But I think Jalen Hyatt, when he runs and he tests out, in addition to the productivity, he's going to be way up there. What, what, what players should we keep our eye on, Mel, that could climb up your big board uh, before the season's over? Well, I think when you look at the O-line, Broderick Jones, the offensive tackle from Georgia, going to see him against Tennessee. Byron, Byron Jones, you talk about coming off the edge. Byron Young is a guy, pass rusher from Tennessee. you got Broderick Jones from Georgia. So he's a guy that I think could climb because we're still looking for that elite tackle. Paris Johnson Jr. at Ohio State. you got Peter Skronsky at, at Northwestern. Could be a guard. I think Broderick Jones, this Tennessee game, will, will tell us a lot about that. And then you think about the, the wide receiver position. Like I said, you got a lot of guys trying to climb up there. And you got those slot guys that are really good, Zay Flowers at Boston College and Josh Downs at North Carolina. But I think the, they've got the size and the physicality of a Quentin Johnston from TCU with Max Duggan really emerging. Quentin Johnston's the guy, Max, that could rise up. I said about talk about wide receiver one, who's going to be the first one off the board. Quentin Johnston, once he tests, if he keeps putting those numbers up, he's going to be certainly in that mix. Okay, Mel, I just wrote that note down. I'm paying attention. I, I, I always know each and every year there are – quarterbacks that we fall in love with in particular this year there's some stud quarterbacks out there but Will Anderson of Alabama is a stud too uh, you have him at the top of your big board would you take him over any of the top QBs if you need a quarterback uh, Jay you take the quarterback, okay, over either Jalen Carter from Georgia, who I think could be ahead of Will Anderson by the time we get to late April in terms mm. of the defensive line and the prospects other than quarterbacks. But I think you take the quarterback if you need the quarterback over Will Anderson Jr. I love the kid. love everything about him. But Tennessee neutralized him. We'll see what happens coming down to these bigger games as we move forward. These huge games that I was going to determine a lot uh, moving forward. But it, it, you look at Will Anderson Jr. He's not Miles Garrett. He's not Von Miller. He doesn't have that explosiveness, doesn't have that bend. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.